For the first time ever, a piece of code, a smart contract, a non-person has been added to the US sanctions list. Interacting with this code can get you a fine of more than $300,000 and it can put you in jail for up to 30 years. I am of course talking about Tornado Cash, a cryptocurrency mixing service that is used by many people as a privacy tool and by North Korean hackers to launder millions of dollars of stolen coins. Annyeonghashimnika, Nicolas Imida, and in today's video we are going to talk about Tornado Cash, what is it and how does it work, the US sanctions list and what do they mean for the crypto industry, and we will take a look at the ugly truth that these sanctions exposed about the Ethereum network and the problems they might have with the upcoming merge. Bitcoin is a database and all you will find in that database are records of people sending money to each other, transactions. Bitcoin is also a public database, which means that you can see a history of all transactions and you can trace how the coins have moved and changed hands all the way to when they were first mined. Now that is a privacy problem and that is the reason why Bitcoin is not the best tool to do money laundering. The wallets on the Bitcoin network don't have usernames, but even if they are anonymous, it is fairly easy to see which coins are moving and where which allows exchanges to block hackers from cashing out on their stolen profits. This is why if you are a hacker and you want to launder money, rather than using Bitcoin, I would suggest to use a different blockchain like Ethereum. Ethereum inherits the privacy problem from Bitcoin. Transactions are public. But where Ethereum is different is that Ethereum allows developers to upload their code to it and run it. When code is uploaded to the Ethereum blockchain, three very important things happen. The code is able to receive and send money just like a human would. No one, even the creator of the code, can edit the code or delete it. And anyone at any point can run that code. Enter Tornado Cash. Tornado Cash is a piece of code uploaded to the Ethereum blockchain that allows users to have anonymous transactions by creating a disconnection between the person sending the money and the person receiving the money. The way it works is brilliant and pretty straightforward. If you want to send 10 coins from A to B and you do it directly, everybody will know. They will know how much you send, from who, to who, and when. To create a disconnect between the sender and the receiver, you can send those 10 coins to Tornado Cash. There, your coins will be put in a pool that holds all the coins of all Tornado Cash users, effectively mixing them. That's why it's called a mixer. When you want to withdraw, you can go back to Tornado Cash and you can receive the 10 coins that you deposited on a brand new address, effectively creating the disconnect. I know what you're thinking. This isn't private at all. If I deposit 333 coins in Tornado Cash and then some anonymous user withdraws 333 coins, they will know it was me. Now, this is why Tornado Cash doesn't accept just any amount. You can only withdraw and deposit 0.1 or 1 or 10 or 100 ETH. Another question you might have is how does Tornado Cash know if the person that is withdrawing the coins made a deposit before without revealing their identity. When you send and deposit your coins in Tornado Cash, you will send them along with a hash, like a signature that only you can create. Tornado Cash will save your deposit along with your signature. When it's time to withdraw, you don't send the signature because if you did, it will be very easy to know your identity. Instead, you will send something called a zero knowledge proof which basically means that you will prove to Tornado Cash that you hold a signature that was sent before, but you don't need to reveal what signature it is. Zero knowledge proofs allows you to prove that you know something without revealing what something is. They are an amazing cryptographic invention and they're actually very hard to explain in a few seconds. So if you want me, I could make a video about it because it's a mind blowing, almost magical thing. The 8th of August of 2022, Tornado Cash was sanctioned by the US government saying that it has been used to launder more than $7 billion of cryptocurrency. Tornado Cash was added to the specially designated nationals and blocked persons lists of the Office of Foreign Assets Control, aka OFAC. What that basically means is that it is illegal for any US citizen, resident or company to do business with any entity on that list, which by the way includes actors such as Cuba, Iran and North Korea. And it now contains the address 
of the Tornado Cash Code and all its related wallets, which means that any US person or entity that interacts with Tornado Cash's code might be breaking the law and it might be subject to a fine and potential jail time. Now, after this happened, many US companies started to freak out. So the source code of Tornado Cash was deleted from GitHub. GitHub also banned the personal accounts of Tornado Cash's developers. The company behind the USDC stablecoin blacklisted the coins stored in the Tornado Cash code. And a man being a suspect of being a Tornado Cash developer was arrested in the Netherlands. Now it's very worrying that they are going after the tool and the developers of that tool instead of going after the bad actors that use the tool. It is true that North Korean hackers and other bad actors actually use Tornado Cash to launder their stolen funds. That is a fact. But North Korean hackers are also potentially using privacy services like VPNs. Should we go after VPN providers and developers? Money laundering isn't the only reason why people use Tornado Cash. It's just a privacy solution. Vitalik Buterin, the creator of Ethereum, said that he has used Tornado Cash before as a privacy tool to donate to Ukrainian refugees and protect their identity. The $7 billion figure that is mentioned on the sanction might not actually be 100% accurate. 7 billion is the amount of money that has passed through Tornado Cash in its lifetime. On this chart, you can see where the money that interacts with Tornado comes from. As you can see, some of it comes from stolen funds and sanctioned actors, but most of it comes from DeFi users and centralized exchanges. Nevertheless, it looks like these sanctions will get challenged in court. Since the Tornado Cash contract isn't a person or a company, it's just code and code seems to be protected under free speech. Now, keep in mind that according to OFAC, quotes, the ultimate goal of sanctions is not to punish, but to bring about a positive change in behavior. Every year, OFAC removes hundreds of individuals and entities from the SDN list. If that's the case, if they don't want to punish, but instead they want to change to a positive behavior, it makes no sense to add Tornado Cash's code to that list. That code is immutable. It doesn't have agency. It cannot change behavior. It's just code. And also from a technical point of view, enforcing these sanctions might not be feasible. After the sanctions were announced, people that had money in Tornado Cash spent more than $50,000 withdrawing 0.1 ETH to high profile Ethereum addresses. Like for example, the CEO of Coinbase or the NFT artist Beeple, Jimmy Fallon, Dave Chappelle, Snoop Dogg, and the basketball player Shaquille O'Neal. Those people are all US citizens and because of how blockchain works, you cannot reject a transaction. So this means that on paper, those people have interacted with the Tornado Cash's contract, which means they're breaking the law. For example, what happens if an Ethereum US validator processes a transaction from somebody in Peru that is interacting with Tornado Cash? Is the validator breaking the law for facilitating money laundering? If that was true, then maybe US validators will have to run their own version of Ethereum that excludes and checks for sanctioned addresses and code. If they did that, then the rest of the world will exclude that chain and we will end up with Ethereum and Ethereum USA. To conclude, Tornado Cash is still operating. It's still running. It can't be taken down, showing the power and the censorship resistance of blockchain and the Ethereum network. North Korean hackers can still use Tornado Cash, but US citizens lost access to a tool that gives them privacy. Now, to be clear, I think that we should go after hackers and people that steal money, but I don't think we should go after tools and developers of those tools. That will hurt innovation. What these sanctions exposed is how much the crypto community is relying on the US service providers that are subject to US sanctions and law. With the move to proof of stake, US exchanges that have a lot of ETH will become very powerful validators, which means that if the US law requires them, they might have to censor transactions on the blocks they provide, which might create a censored version of the Ethereum network, maybe creating a hard fork or slashing the user's funds, who knows. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments, what would you do? Would you ban a tool because it's used by bad people, but also by good people? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm very curious about what you have to say. Thank you as always for watching. And don't forget, if you want to learn to code and you want to do it for absolutely free, then please click the link below and I will see you there. Stay free, stay healthy. Eat Gimji. Kamsamnida. Salam hamnida. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.
Contract to tornado, tornado construct, don't 